Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to dial in Espresso on the DE1, or really my particular approach with dialing in. If you are on the fence about the DE1 or this type of machine, uh, I hope to highlight really how easy it is to dial in Espresso, or really the advantages of having a visual display of all the variables that you use to dial in uh, Espresso. Traditionally speaking, when dialing in Espresso, we have a few variables, or important variables really. Things like your grind size, your dose in, your uh, dose out, temperature, pressure, and flow. Depending on your machine, you might ha actually have a gauge that will show you that thing. What the tablet brings to the table, or the DE1 specifically, is a visual representation of all of those variables on a graph. Now we're able to see what is exactly happening time-wise in our extraction. So over that 20, 30, 40, 50 seconds, we can see how pressure, flow, temperature, weight, all of that builds or falls. Uh, it's incredibly easy actually to diagnose issues in your extraction, or really it makes dialing in very, very help, very easy. So this is my process on dialing in with the DE1. The first thing I want to do is just mimic the data or really mimic a profile. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to be using Damien's Londinium R version three profile. This is actually my one of probably my favorite profiles. I love this so much. Uh, but let me do a quick walkthrough on how this profile, what this profile is and how does it exactly look like and give you a very brief look at what you can do when you have something like this tablet here. So there's a camera right here and we'll be able to see. So I'm using actually the DSX skin, but uh, for the purpose of this, let's go into the profile. So at the very right here, we see this is exactly what the profile looks like. You know, we can choose all these different profiles on the left here, right? Um, but for this one, uh, demonstration purposes, it's a lot easier to show you the Londinium uh, R version three. So real quick, the blue graph, the blue line here is your flow and the green is your pressure. And at the bottom here is your time. So, and then also there's a red, there's going to be a red uh, thing, red line, which is going to be your temperature. If we go into advanced here, we can see that there are a bunch of steps. This is what this profile looks like at the bottom here. And we can see how each of the steps is going through based on time. There's also specific limits you can set too. So if you want to stop at a specific weight or you want to use a certain water and volume, like you want to do volumetrics, you can do that. But anyway, let me go back into here and let's look at each of the steps briefly. What's really cool with the DE1 is conditional programming. So we have conditions in here to move on to the next step if a certain, uh, certain variable is reached, right? So in this particular case, we're going to fill if the pressure is over 1.5 bars, move on to the next step. And you can always change all of this too, but I'm going to not really mess with the particular profiles here uh, or particular conditions here just for demonstration purposes. Then we infuse, <clears throat> pressure up. So now we're building pressure here. We hold at nine bars and then we begin to decline. So we move on if our flow is over 1.9 milliliters per second. Then it'll continue to decline and go to five bars, which is the next part here. So we see we have the pressure at 5.5 bars there. Then it'll kind of just go on and on and on. That's really cool. And that gives you a lot of control over specific variables. But generally speaking, you don't have to touch a lot of those variables, but you can. And if you want to bring out specific flavors or specific subtleties within an extraction, adjusting the variables at each of the steps can really do that. But we're going to just stick with this particular profile, which mimics the Londinium R machine. I'm going to be using Paper Moon Nicaragua, which is a pretty great espresso bean, to be honest. Uh, I'll put a link to this guy in the description below. And uh, I'm going to dose 18 grams in, 36 grams out. I have my Akaya Lunar here hooked up to the, to the machine. So it'll always stop at 36 grams. And I'm going to be prepping everything. Just I'm just going to tamp with the uh, decent tamper here. The first shot I'm going to do on purpose is grind too coarse. I'm just going to grind a little bit too coarse on the niche here, set it to about 20 on this guy. And then um, I'm going to do a shot that's way too fine. And then I'm going to sort of gradually dial in. But basically all you have to do first step is just try to get a shot that kind of looks like the data or kind of looks like the preview. We just want to get a shot that sort of starts declining around that 35, 40 second mark in this particular case. Once you do mimic the data, all you have to do is adjust temperature to taste. And 
if you want to explore even further, then you adjust those specific steps within the overall profile. All right, so this is definitely way too coarse. Um, and I hope the GoPro is able to capture this here, but you'll see that this is way too coarse. I'm just gonna do a very quick uh, toothpick WDT, but this is gonna be a shot that's, I would say, undrinkable. And uh, you know, you can, you, can, you can see how coarse it is, but we'll pull a shot just to show you what the data looks like. So everything auto tears when you have the Akaya scales hooked up. The data here is going to build up on the right here, um, but I just set the profile back to stock and here is the extraction. So we see that it is visually pulling way too fast and we see in our data here that it's barely able to build pressure. So we're not even able to build pressure. By the way, this dotted chart here, the dotted chart is what it's supposed to try to do. And then the uh, actual solid chart is what it is doing. So we see that it tried to build up to nine bars here, but it was unable to because we ground too coarse. And also this shot looks kind of bad. So I'm not even going to uh, try to uh, taste this at all. You know, doesn't look so good, but uh, let's prep the next shot, which is going to be too fine now. So I'm moving my grind size from like 20 on the niche. I'm just gonna go like seven. You know, these numbers aren't that accurate between the, the grinders, but I'm just gonna go from super coarse to super fine. And I'm gonna show you what happens when the pressure just can't decline because we build, we build too much pressure because the grinds are just too fine. And now let's pull the same exact shot here. And uh, visually speaking, I don't know if my puck prep is, is that good, but uh, I'm just wanna, I just wanna show you data-wise what that will look like. So now it's, this is supposed to be a pre-infusion step, by the way, as it says here, we can see the step. And uh, because we've ground too fine, we aren't really getting many pre-infusion drops. So we're only going to be able to get some liquid when the machine is trying to build pressure. And we're almost choking the machine at this point because the grinds are so fine. Now we've even gone down to the decline stage because of time-wise here. We weren't able to build the flow, but because it was looking at time, it went on to the next step. And it's just going to stop at 36 grams right now. So that was, um, you know, kind of, kind of sad. It just kept going on to the next step because of our duration, which is down here. It didn't move on to the next step because of our flow. It moved on to the, step, the next step because of how fine we ground. Yeah, so super over extracted. Um, it's incredibly bitter. Um, yeah, it tastes terrible. So let's now actually go and get into a middle ground and grind a bit coarser so we can dial in. All right, so puck prep aside, the data should look pretty close this time now, or closer at least. And then if not, all you have to do is do a little bit fine adjustments on our grind, and um, we'll see what happens now. Going into our data so we can take a look. So now we're getting kind of close to how the pressure should build. Uh, along the dotted green line and the solid green line. Now we're actually pre-infusing down here and we're building pressure. So it's pretty close, honestly. And also my puck prep <laughs> wasn't looking so good. And now we're declining like the five grams did there. And I'm spraying everywhere with this, but the, um, Data looks kind of close to what the machine is trying to do, but we can also do a little bit finer, I think, to look just a little bit closer to what the preview of the data looked like. So now this should be something that is a lot more drinkable than the other two shots. So I'm going to give this a try real quick. Okay, we're getting there. 
it could be better. What we do need to adjust is next is temperature, but I think I'm gonna pull one more shot with just a slight fine adjust, finer grind adjustment. We were close to the, what the steps we're trying to do. What we wanna do next is get the visual of the graph to look a little bit closer. So that's the next step. And then after that, the final step is to just play with the temperature and then you'll be able to reduce acidity or reduce ashiness, whatever uh, you need to do with the temperature there. And I'll show you that after I get the data to be look even closer. Okay, 18. And now I've ground, ground a little bit finer this time. And the reason why I've ground finer for this particular pro for this particular shot is because I want my shot to instead of decline so fast around this 25 second mark I want it to look more in the lines of this shot where it has a gradual decline in that 30 to 35 second mark and then what I'm going to do afterwards is just play with the temperature to get the uh, acidity to the right level and the uh, flavors that I particularly want. Let me go in here real quick. So we're pretty on <clears throat> we're pretty on the dot here with pressure. So I think this will look kind of close to what uh, the shot I wanted it to look like. So now we're pre-infusing. Those pre-infusion drops look really good. We're pretty close to the pressure up here. Now it's going to going longer, and then now we are in the nine bar hold, and now it's going to go on to the next step, which is decline. After like 30-ish seconds, unless, or it'll stop at 36 grams. Okay, so this shot doesn't look too bad either. This looks really good. Okay, better, a little bit, a little bit better than the previous shot that we had, that we're getting, we're getting close to what the data is like. I think I've ground just slightly too fine, and I'm going to just do another one just to verify real quick before we go and adjust temperatures. Now let's try our new grind setting at 18 grams and see if we can make this part of the graph do a little slight decline. So I've ground a little bit coarser than earlier and let's see what happens. The thing is, is the data is nice, but at the end of the day, trust your taste buds. What the data will help you do is get to the right flavor you desire. And from a diagnosis standpoint, the data is incredibly powerful. Okay, so new shot with the slightly coarser adjustment on the uh, grinding, on the grind size. So I'll move out of the way so you can see the data. Okay, so pre-infusion looks really good on this particular shot. And now the pressure is rising. And now we're getting that slight decline in pressure. So this looks really good. The data of this chart looks very close to what the preview here looks. So. And then we also can follow the steps down here where it's getting pretty close as well. So that's pretty good here. Now, and then here, if I bring up to the camera, you can see that this particular shot looks pretty good. And I'm going to try this. I think this is really close dialed and really close to the data. Now I'm gonna see what it tastes like. And then all I have to do next is adjust temperature. Okay, so this needs a slight temperature adjustment. This is pretty good too. Okay, so I'm happy with the grind size. I'm happy with the overall feel of this shot in terms of mouth, te mouth feel texture. It was pretty chocolatey, but I kind of want to see what happens when there's a low temperature or a higher temperature. And I think that's what's really fun to do with this particular machine, but also from a dialing in and you know discovering the flavor you really, really like. 
uh, it's so easy to just go into a profile and all you have to do here is I'm just going to adjust the adjust everything across the board uh, just by four degrees and then we're gonna see what happens up and down. Um, what we can do is also, if we wanna bring out specific subtleties within extraction during our pre-infusion or pressure up and pressure down uh, in this particular profile, we can then change durations of things. We can then change temperatures. People like to pre-infuse at lower temperatures, then you go up high, higher, lower, vice versa. But it's really fun to kind of explore that and it's so easy to do it in any way you want to. Okay, so now let's increase the temperature across the board on everything in the profile by four degrees. So I'm just going to do 198. This is a darker roast, so it's probably not gonna be a good idea, but we'll see what happens. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And what's really cool with this is then I could actually save this profile as something else. I could say, once I'm entirely dialed in, I could say Damien's London, Londinium R version three for the Paper Moon Nicaragua, right? You can now adjust all these different things. You can even, I can even put niche zero, uh, grind setting 13 or 12 here, right? And it's really cool to be able to do all of that. And now you can basically have preset profiles every single time, depending on what bean you have, depending on what profile you want to use. So I could have, I could say, use a Slayer profile, E61 profile. I do the exact same process what I've done earlier in the video. And now I just name things based on what beans I used. And I can even have notes on the flavors inside as well as notes on what grind size I'm using. And that's what's really cool. There's a Godshot setting in here where we can save the exact pressure curve of something and try to mimic it every single time. So anyway, that's kind of a little long tangent, but let's do some two more shots and see what happens. And now our graph is gradually declining. Okay, so data wise looks exactly the same like our other shot we see here. Data-wise looks exactly the same. Now let's try it. Higher temperature, four degrees. Okay, this tastes kind of bad, probably because this is a dark roast and shouldn't really be uh, used at a higher temperature like that. And um, now I'm going to try the other way, which is four degrees lower. I think I liked it actually uh, at the lower temperature anyway but we're just doing it for fun and we're gonna see what happens. And all I have to do is go back into my profile and lower everything across the board. Okay, so data will look the exact same because we've kept our grind the exact same size. What will change is the flavor of it. The overall feel and body of the shot will be kind of the same because we are building pressure and flow the exact same way every single time what will change is how it actually tastes. And that's pretty cool. Depending on what type of profile you use, you can get drastically different mouthfeel, different uh, flavors out of it, but adjusting temperature is really nice too and lets you get into that fine tuning world. And also some beans just might taste terrible if you have a low temp versus high temp. Anyway, uh, so lower temp now, we're gonna see what happens. I'm going to briefly taste it. I'm getting really caffeinated, <laughs> but Hopefully this has been sort of educational in the sense of how this is. Okay, this is what the data looks like now. Now it's pre-infusing. We can see some drops. The lunar has started weighing. Now we're building pressure up. And this data-wise looks exactly the same as the other two shots that I've done. But this should taste different because we're brewing at a lower temperature. So, don't know if the camera here can see it, but... Okay. Ooh, okay. So that's interesting. This is pretty close to what I want it to taste like. The I'm getting more of the chocolate now out of, it was already really chocolatey, uh, a, a little bit slightly different. It's very hard to, for me to describe flavors. The entire point is, is that if you approach dialing in pretty methodically, which is just mimic the data of a profile that you want or make your own profile and try to make your grind size 
mimic that. And then all you have to do afterwards is adjust temperatures. If you want to really, really fine tune, maybe say subtleties within the flavor of the shot or the body of the shot, that's when you change the duration. That's when you change the flow. That's when you change parameters in those steps. So I really hope this was a fairly fun video to show you guys what uh, dialing in on a machine like this is and what the advantages are of having a visual display of all those important variables we need when dialing in espresso. I'd like to just real quick show you guys in here. So we've done this on the Londinium version through profile, right? We see all these different steps. What we want to do is just um, mimic the data, right? Mimic what these steps are trying to do. Then what I'd like to do afterwards is just uh, taste it see if we need to increase or decrease temperature. The same approach applies for any of these other profiles. There's so many different profiles in this machine and you can make your own. Other profiles that I would like to just real quick mention are the Olympia Cremina profile by Dennis, uh, Den which is made by Dennis from Cafetech, the, the guy that makes the monolith grinders. And that's a really cool profile as well. Uh, two other profiles I want to real quick touch upon are the Slayer profiles. So there is a Slayer profile by Damien, which is uh, has this ridiculously long 60 second pre-infusion. So you have to grind ultra fine for that. I really like that profile straight. Uh, I like the lever profiles for milk based drinks. Another really cool profile is Damien's level profile. Damien Brakel. Brakel, Brackel, I hope I pronounced your name right. You've done a lot for the DE1. <laughs> um, but uh, things like the innovative long pre-infusion, which is a flow profile here. So what I was showing you earlier were these advanced profiles where we can look at the different steps. There are simpler profiles like the flow and pressure profile where it's pretty laid out here. And all you want to do is just try to make your profile the same thing. The approach works the exact same way. Uh, I do like the advanced profiles more because you get granular control into the conditional programming, which really lets you fine tune exactly what you want in each of the shots. I hope this video was helpful in learning how to dial in Espresso if you own a DE1 or you're just interested in seeing what something like this is capable of doing. And I really hope I highlighted how easy it is to dial in on a machine like this or really the capabilities you have to fine tune to get the flavors you want out of any shot, any espresso. Uh, and it's pretty amazing and fun to be able to do that. What for me, what's really fun is just experimenting and trying out my favorite beans under multiple profiles. That's kind of the joy I have when using this machine. And to be able to just on the fly save that profile, save what I dialed in on the on my grinder, all of that, have that all just in the profile. Uh, it makes remembering what to do and what I want to do in each of those shots a lot easier and makes repeating all of the results every single time so much easier than trying to fiddle around with a paddle or fiddle around with a lever. So I you know, I'm, I think this is a really great machine for people who want to be able to repeat and explore every single variable within Espresso. But the thing is, is I, I will have another video touching upon how easy it is to use this machine. Uh, but I don't really think this is a machine for people who just, you know, they just want some nice Italian made machine, right? This is a tech bros dream right here. And um, I think it's super fun. It's very, it's incredibly nice to look at the data, but if people just don't want to look at graphs, they, you know, they, you're not, you just want to press the button. That's a different story. Although I will touch upon in a future video that yes, you can definitely use the DE1 without a tablet. Once you are dialed in, you can just repeat every single shot by pressing the start button on the group head controller. There's really no need for a tablet at that point. Um, but I'm rambling on a little bit too long. So, I just wanted to say thanks for watching the video and let me know if you have any questions.